Hey folks, this is Price is Wrong from uh, Battle Vortex. Um, here we are, another Saturday, another uh, BV roundtable, and uh, uh, we actually had a lot of success last week. Um, I, you know, I was pretty happy with the show last night when we just really did like a. We didn't really have much of an agenda. We just kind of did, uh, you know, open mic and let everybody, um, you know, talk about something they wanted to talk about. And um, I, I think we're going to try doing that a little bit more. I did. I do have some stuff prepared for just in case dissent comes up as a topic, which I'm fairly sure that it may. But uh, you know, so I got some stuff prepared if 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 it comes up. But um, I guess um, to start off, we'll probably just go down here and, and introduce the panel. Uh, we're full uh, as usual. Um, I guess I'll just start closest. To oh, hold on, that's me right there. Sorry about that. I uh, I, I did the new mistake. My bad. Crash, you're breaking your own rule. Yeah, I did. I broke my own rule. I forgot to mute my YouTube. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I want to pause it too. But anyway, um, so next to me uh, on on my screen, anyway, I have Extreme XC29. Uh, most people know him from. Uh, I know he does a lot of Twitch streams. He does his own uh, uh, like a video of a Battle Pirate blog too. And um, so, welcome Extreme. Yeah. Uh, next to him we have uh, a Willard. Uh, that's A.K.A. Dark Superman. Say Very hi, Willard. <laughs> uh, Wayne, we have Wayne next to him. Uh, that's uh, A.K.A. Legman. Morning, everyone from Australia. <laughs> you know, we got a few Aussies on here. I think uh, I see next to him is uh, Toxic. Uh, he's actually in my alliance. Um, uh, he's probably, I think, you don't get too many people from my alliance actually try getting on these things, but Toxic is one. Morning, okay. everyone. Yeah. Uh, we got Kilted Pirate next to him, and uh, Kilted Pirate on, on my screen. And uh, I, Well, he actually just changed his name to Kilted Pirate in the game, too, I guess, to match his, uh, the rest of his online personas. See the confusion? <laughs> Uh, Evil Kiwi uh, is on here. We got lots of Aussies on here today, and uh, so hey, I know I'm he... not an Aussie, man. I'm not an Aussie. <laughs> you know, I thought I asked you that before, and you told me you were in Australia. Oh, I live in Australia, but I'm a Kiwi. Okay, you can't mix the two up. <laughs> uh, all right, my bad. I get confused, man, but I think it's just because I'm not over there. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Damnation and Hellfire is another. He's a round, ta round table regular. Welcome. What's up, guys? All right. And uh, next to him, we got Andrew. Uh, that's AKA White Star. And uh, he's a member of uh, Liam's Alliance, TCZE. How's it going, Hi, White Star? And then uh, all the way at the very end is uh, Aiden. Uh, Aiden, I don't know. I know you're a low level, right? I don't know much uh, else. About yeah, you. level 55, currently residing down in Sector 7. Uh, In-game name of Black Atticus. Oh, okay, Black Atticus. Okay, I've seen you over here in the YouTube chat. Hmm. So easy ally points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, no alliance, no alliance, no tag, no alliance. I'm not turning your base. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in a 36-hour bubble at the moment, so impenetrable force field. Give it your best shot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess. Here. Um, I guess I, I know uh, a, a, a big topic that I think probably a lot of people might be interested in is is the, is dissent. Um, and I know I had some folks that were actually – I'd gotten a lot of feedback from the Thursday show about particularly the one slide that I did with the, the mortars. A lot of people thought that I should have had a negotiator three in there. And I, I did go ahead and I, I actually did um, – um, I did uh, – Went ahead and I went back and edited my slide and I added that extra column for for negotiator three and, and I guess I'll just share it real fast. But uh, basically, uh, it, all right, it worked. Hot dang. Um, uh, here on my screen, you you can probably look. Uh, the negotiator three is actually right next to negotiator two, and um, I got it like right over here. The two of them, as far as DPS per weight, they're uh, pretty much identical. Um, you know, the the only difference really is the uh, just the, the standard DPS. Uh, you know, it's basically a lot more. So basically, with those two, you'd always want to go as many negotiator twos as you can to make sure you get more mortars on. And then uh, if you have additional weight, then you could add negotiator three in. But um, I know a lot of people were curious about the Searing Barrage and the Pandemonium mortar. That's the two new mortars, and uh, and it's kind of the similar relationship where the Pandemonium. 
is uh, really high DPS, but really low DPS per weight. And um, uh, let me actually, maybe I should turn off my, uh, I should turn off my uh, overlay real quick, just so everybody can see the whole thing. But anyway, uh, I was just about to ask you that. Yeah. Well, the the the, the uh, twenty eight two is the DPS per hundred tons on that one, where the searing barrage is quite a bit higher, seventy seven point four. And so basically, you'd want to load up with searing barrage as much as possible. And then if you had additional weight for for more deep for for more DPS, like you're happy with your armor and all that. Then you can go ahead and, and and maybe pepper in a pandemonium on each hull or something like that. And I suspect that's what we'll be seeing a lot of, and uh, here in the near future. So I don't know if anybody had anything they wanted to add to that before we just move on to the next guy on the panel here. Nothing. All so right. Really, yeah. that getting badass is sort of going to be the best mortar in the game. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. nice to see mortar fleets making a comeback, and that they're pushing in two different directions instead of one. Because they got ballistic <clears throat> and explosive coming in at once. Yeah. So I think that's nice options. I like that. Yeah, I like the Nova Storm coming out. Yeah. Mm. It'll be interesting to see the build time on the Nova Storm. And the repair time. Well, we already know yeah. the repair time. Uh, the repair time. I mean, it's a hundred fifty percent repair modifier on it. So, pretty much, if you can figure out now, the, the the thing with that, I know a lot of people compare it to DNX because it looks like a DNX, right? But um, uh, it, um, it it looks like the DNX, but you know, it's got six armor slots instead of four, like a DNX has four armor slots. So this one right here, I think it has a a higher standard damage and then six armor slots. So and then a hundred fifty percent repair modifier. So the repair times are going to be potentially quite large. But you know the power is in your hands. Whoever it is that builds these hulls. I mean, obviously, if you don't go heavy armor, you know, then you, you're impacting your survivability. But um, you know, the the higher armor you go, the the more repair time. So you know, build it to an affordable level. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of yeah. a trade off. Because with that said, also the more armor you have, the more likely you are to survive through multiple base hits. So it's kind of a trade-off on how you build it. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, anyway, um, I don't. Does anybody else on here have any kind of questions or anything they wanted to say about descent? I just go down the line. Uh, extreme anything? Um, I thought I had a pun for the name, but I don't. All right, <laughs> Willard. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, oh, go ahead. How how would you rate this raid on difficulty? Oh well, you know we never know that, do we, until it starts? Because people usually cry uh, a whole heck of a lot the first day. I mean, um, you can't really gauge it by. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll know. I, I know me personally. I plan on j jump into alpha and start streaming immediately as soon as it starts in alpha. As uh, my plan, but mm -hmm. you know. We we can say it's going to be really really difficult. I know those those platforms are going to be really really tough, but you don't have to do the platforms to complete the raid, and it's going to be a whole store. Uh, so generally, those don't have the the two prize limit per um, no per tier. So usually you can just just shop all day, and I mean you can just get you know millions and millions of points and and, and get every hole get that you ever wanted, you know. So but, it's basically uh, a hull raid. Yes. Yeah, it's going to supposed to be a hull raid, but they said there was going to be something different this time because they said mentioned different tabs, so that well, hopefully there there'll probably be tabs for like other specials and and maybe even weapons. Um, you mentioned it on the on your show on Thursday. Uh, they got a black uh, spots on that bar at the top, and each time each one of them it opens up a tier. Hmm. Okay. Well, cool. I um, yeah. So as far as difficulty goes, I mean, really, you know, just not not really sure just yet. And it's going to be it's just like Beauty in the Eye of the Beholder. I mean, some people are going to say it's too easy. Of course, then they're going to be like spending like uh, six dollars a fleet, you know, and just going out in auto and targets, and they're going to say it's too easy. But uh, so you know, be yeah. prepared to see those. I mean, it happens every every month. And they're the people that grind everything. Yeah, yep. and then there's people that grind, yeah. yeah. Oh, Wayne, did you have anything? I'm sorry, did I just yeah. cut somebody off? I'm sorry. No, I just had a random thought, actually. 
So didn't he say that the platforms would be similar to like drag bases as far as difficulty is concerned? Well, quite honestly, it looks like it's going to be a lot more difficult, in my opinion, is because you have that little shrouded uh, tactical module on uh, the scouts, or on some scouts, and it looks like they're going to be parked to cover up various turrets so that you won't be able to just target whatever you want to target. Okay. Um, you know, so it's going to be kind of difficult. I wonder how many of those fleet ships will have sonar or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the ones that I saw had thermal, but I don't know how long, the, how big the thermal is going to be. Nine keeps how huge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm sorry, Wayne. You want to? That's all right. Again? That's all right. I just try not to talk over people. Um, I've got a couple things on the ray. And we've been discussing this in my alliance and the sector is, and not particularly in this order, but A, get into a sector that's very active and preferably with some big coiners. B, voice chat will be a mega help in the um, those new things. C, pinches. And yeah, I guess the, the, the pinches on the scouts, those scouts and those platforms would probably be really nice. But I guess you're talking about being in, a, in an active sector just to get those platforms unlocked. And, yes. then, uh, and then the coiners, because uh, obviously they're going to be the biggest help with the, um, the platforms. And then the pinches, because the pinches will probably come in really handy against those scouts, with especially, particularly with the shroud, because um, I guess the shroud is going to cover you know, like any targets uh, within its tactical field. And uh, but a pinch should eliminate that shroud for whatever duration of time. So it's all good tips. Correct. Yeah. And if you've got four people, four pinches, and you're all on voice chat, and you organise it, you can take turns at dropping a pinch on th that thing. Yeah, it's good tips. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do have a comment on the uh, sector bar. I saw in the forums it mentioned that the amount of points or Fleets will have to kill depends a bit on the sector and the sector population. So the smaller sectors will require actually less points. I didn't know that. Hmm. hmm. They almost you, got you, it did right. you read that on the forums? Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's something I just completely overlooked and missed. Can you find the forum link, mm. please? Yeah, if you if you uh, got it handy, sure, yeah. it'd be great. I'd, I'd even screen share it. Yeah, I'll have a look for it. Yeah, cause that, cause that's that's interesting. It almost, and someone's going to complain about that being unfair somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Prong <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. You know, some, everything's <laughs> always unfair to somebody, and there's always going to be somebody standing by waiting to complain about it. So yeah. that's the nature of Battle Pirates. Mm -hmm. One thing yep. I do like about this raid is if you want a shot at the proto nemesis, which granted is probably going to be really small anyway. But, like, they're forcing you to do co-op. Because, like, I myself, I don't like doing co-op. I like doing everything by myself. I get a real feeling of accomplishment when I'm done. And I'm like, yeah, I got this, and I did it all by myself. But now if I want to shot the proto, I ha am forced to have to, you know, play with other people. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Well, that's why I asked about the difficulty earlier. Because I remember you mentioned thing. it being similar to drag bases. My first thought was, well, if it's similar to drag bases, it's not going to be co-op mandatory because people slow those things all the time. Well, I think he was saying the layout is similar to drag bases, not the difficulty level. All right. Well, did you want to see? I mean, did did you watch the show Thursday on uh, our Thursday show extreme? Yeah, I did. Okay, I didn't know the, those screenshots. I mean, I, I have those handy, but uh, just just uh, you know, it's just it's a couple of screenshots, but I I don't know. Um, yeah, I saw the screenshots. I just I try to not to go off. Uh, quick appearances until I've actually been in the target and then I make a judgment. Yeah, yeah. And and they, they may be slightly different modifications, you know, uh, to, for each one too. I mean, I know we got like three different drag based layouts and um, yeah. I, it's hard to say how many different layouts it's going to be of these reverse all platforms. I doubt they'll all be identical because the screenshots I have don't look like the, the ones in the video uh, that uh, came out this past week. So. Okay, that's the link for the Fred, I read it on uh, mod tro is it Troger. Yeah. Okay. Mentioned it. Let's see if I can. Uh, I'll try pulling it up here and screen share. Well, actually, I'll see if I can find it. While uh, we'll see if we can go on to the next guy, and then uh, I'll look for that, and then I'll pull it up. I found Trogdar. 
So there will be an adjustment to the total points needed based on sector population. And so All right. So quick. Quick. Is it this one? Yeah, we'll just go this one. Isn't it? Did I pick the right one? I think I did. Yeah, well, you pretty much wrote it there word for word. Okay. So, um, yeah, there will, there will be adjustment uh, to the total points needed based on sector population. So if you go into, if it's a lower populated sector, then less points should be required. So very interesting. Yeah, mm. very interesting. Mm, time to go to an inactive sector. Yeah. Well, Toxic, did you have anything? Uh, that you wanted to ask well, about descent or anything else, sir? I, for one, am looking forward to it. Um, I hope it's not going to be a big maze like it like it was in in the uh, in the last right format. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. And also, like Wayne said, I I think that um, voice chat will be uh, will be a crucial part of it, of of getting um, messages and 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 tips and hints and, and instructions across to other players that are in that that last big um, outpost or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I know a lot of, a lot of alliances are doing like mandatory all one sector too. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, I, uh, all right, uh, Kilted, you got anything, buddy? Um, I think you kind of touched on it earlier, Jeff, but it's just I've seen a few people saying that they're not going to be able to do this raid because it's a big base and all the rest of it. But as you said on Thursday, so just a quick reminder, it's not just that that you can get points from. There's still going to be the, the map fleets and the, uh, campaigns. the, the campaigns from your base. So it's, it's, <clears throat> These big bases, are, they're going to be cool. That's how you get your chance at the proto-nemesis, but they're not the be-all and end-all to get your raid points. Yeah. So it's like last raids with a new target. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's just a new feature, mother, isn't it? Yeah, we yeah. had the motherships last month, but uh, no motherships this month. Um, so it's just going to be those those platforms. Yeah, so I think it's an option, not mandatory. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> Evil Kiwi. Um, I, I noticed that Doom Rooster said on Tuesday night about um, all the water-based tar- um, targets are going to be co-op, but what about the ones that are in the campaign? Are, are, they, are, are there actually campaign targets this time or not? Oh, yeah, there's still going to be the regular campaigns that we've been having uh, so far all year. So um, you're still going to have like your siege and strike and recon and all that stuff. Um, so th- we're still going to have all the regular campaigns. Okay, because the siege you could co-op with your lower levels in your alliance. But the elite, she couldn't. I think it was last time. All of them will be co-op. They're supposed to all be co-op, even even the elites. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This the kick's for this time. Yeah, they they were sure last time, weren't they? So. <laughs> yeah, they were sure. <laughs> the poor little kids in the recon <laughs> got screwed. Yeah. I don't mean to take cheap shots, but they kind of lined themselves up for it. Yeah. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. All right. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so I don't want to sound negative because I'm actually excited about doing this raid. A, because I'm home and I'm going to have lots of time to play it and grind it out. But the thing I feel I have to be negative about is, unfortunately, what's the kick size definition of extra points and etc. Um, are we being optimistic or are we going off past experience? Yeah, I mean, past experience. Are you referring specifically to like the platforms? Oh yeah, you know how you're supposed to get a bonus. Well, I mean, them putting the platforms, they did say that this particular target would pay out. I mean, you know, generally the targets don't pay out uranium at all, and um, water targets or anything. And these here are actually supposed to pay out uranium. So, I mean, it is an option, another way for us to get uranium throughout the event for all six days. And we're still going to have our dredge day on Friday too, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Some of the, di- the the resource payouts have been fairly disappointing in the past. So, I, I you know, I, we'll just have to wait and see. And then if if adjustments are needed, we'll just hope they make them fast. But, you know, I, I'm sure we'll hear about it. Snail mail. Yeah. Um, damnation and hellfire. 
What's going on, bud? You got anything for uh, Descent or anything I'm else? I'm actually really looking forward to Descent, but I'm wondering what do you guys think about these uh, new shroud boats that you can't target and the thing giving them a shroud is behind the shroud boats? No, the shroud boats can be targeted. Uh, those are the only uh, things inside the tactical field that uh, cannot have a shroud keeping them from being targeted. No, no, I'm talking about the boats that have shroud can't be targeted, and the one that's giving them a shroud is behind them. So you basically have to go through the shroud boats to get to the one that's giving them shroud. Uh, yeah, well, we we talked about that earlier too, didn't we? In the pinch missiles, is uh, is being a way to potentially eliminate those shroud boats uh, to, the, to eliminate the shroud. Uh, that way, we could select targets. Are the boats that are shrouded? Are they even? Will they be able to be affected by pinch? Or are they just kind of overall immune to everything until the shroud? Bearer is destroyed. Well, no, I would. I think. That, yeah, yeah. Well, I would. I, I personally would think that you can still damage anything that is shrouded. I mean, they would not be immune to damage pinches or anything. I would not I, think. I think what we was meaning though is that you pinch the boat that is giving them the shroud, That's and then right. the shroud stops, you know, being being active. So then you can target the boats that were shrouded. Okay. I think. Will pinch, will pinch rockets uh, uh, temporarily disable the tac tactical field? Yes. Yeah, they, they do on every, I would think so, they do every other tactical field, tactical module, uh, is, is that the, the tactical field is eliminated by pinch. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Another thing we don't know is whether these tactical boats are moving or not. Because if they move, then that, that shroud will just pass along oh, that's all the turrets, too. different turrets and stuff. Um, well, and also, I know the pictures we've seen had showed them with a the thermal, and we don't know what the thermal range is, so we don't know. Assault Torp Bs might be a good way to deal with the shroud boats. You know, so it's just one of the things we're just going to have to uh, figure it out, you know, when it goes live. Yeah. Is that satisfactory, yeah. Damnation? Yeah, that sounds good. I'm still kind of annoyed by the whole concept of them, but yeah, I mean, it's there. They can be <laughs> worked with, I suppose. Uh, Andrew, you got anything that you wanted to add, or questions, or anything that concerning down uh, the uh, descent? Well, I'm, look, I'm like the rest of you. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I can't say what it's going to be like till you try it, but yeah. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that big, big base because. Like you say, it was confirmed on the BB show that it's it's still going to be a random drop of the Proto. Proto Nemesis. So you're not going to be guaranteed it. So it's going to be more damage, it's going to be more coins. So is it going to be worth it? Also, the Nem is not a right good ship anyway. So I'd rather save my coins to build ships and do the raid and the stuff that I need. So I might just pass on that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, actually you had some, uh, you know, of course people always say our builds are crap, but, uh, um, you know, I had somebody actually said, you know, ask what we were smoking when we did the Proto Nemesis builds on the show. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's all good. I tried posting them on YouTube chat, it wouldn't let me. Apparently, uh, we're not allowed to put links there. Yeah, not in the YouTube chat, yeah. No. Um, Aiden, did you have anything for the descent or uh, anything, any other topics that you want to discuss? Yeah, I'm looking forward to descent, partly because I'm still in the strike campaign. Uh, it'll be interesting to see just how tough it is because my unarmored V2H fleet last raid managed to get through a full campaign without sinking, which was nice, but there were a whole heap of people on the forums complaining that the strike wasn't doable, so it'll be <laughs> interesting to see just how much, how many of those my VTHs can deal with without needing repairs. You know, I, I know a lot of people. Uh, I always try to get, you know, I'm always uh, like pro streaming. You know, I, I try to get more people streaming, but you know, you don't really can't really hide much. Um, you know, when you're streaming, a lot of people try to hide. They're really protective over their builds and et cetera, you know. But um, it, it, it's it's fun to see other people's tactics, you know, and uh, see what other people yeah. are doing and that, that is working for them or not working. But, um, you know, I, I know sometimes it's it can be just as curious what are people doing so wrong as is as it is 
is that to is to what you know people are doing right. You know, it can be, it is it can you can be just as curious of you know it's like how can you possibly be doing so poorly? <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's. I, mean, uh, I've, yeah. I got really good last raid of managing to avoid the throwers. I mean, occasionally I'd screw up and I'd take a bit of damage from one, but the ship would sink before it did too much damage. Hmm. Yeah, I never built any V2s, but I don't know, maybe one day. One day. Which one's out of the hitch, out of the seas? Uh, H. Yeah, the missile ones are better. I was, yeah, I was really lucky back in the December raid when I worked out that my Piranha Drone Arb was really good at clearing out the ships in the strike campaign, and as a result, I ground out the whole raid, got the V2H and the siege missile, and I'm not regretting doing that at all. <laughs> I, I got a question for you because uh, you're, you said you're level 55, right? Is there any hulls in particular that you're looking forward to uh, being able to uh, acquire? Uh, Night Hawks for one. Uh, if they've got the limited hulls, uh, Frosty. Mm, yeah. I can put one of my the least ranked of my V2Hs in my base guard as the spotter and swap it with the Frosty. Uh, depending on how, again, how hard the strike is, yeah. maybe uh, Phantom, but again, it's how many points I can get over the six days. The, the frost, frost burn has become pretty essential these days as far as uh, hitting bases. Uh, it with, has. Particularly, particularly Wendigo bases. Um, it's become really, really essential. Because uh, a Wendigo can really mess a fleet up if you don't have a Frostburn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just one Wendigo yeah. turret. I'm glad it's limited. That's such a one. But, yeah, they can Look, be really That's really why I, I don't think the, that pro, Proto Nemesis is good anymore. Because it's a flagship and you can't put a, a Frosty with it. That's true, yeah. Yeah. All Doesn't right. it have the same effect as a Frosty? What, Nemesis? The Proto Nemesis? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, uh, only, only the NPC one. <laughs> just, just the, the one yeah. Kisai gets to throw in are the only ones that have that effect. Yeah. yeah. The God okay. mode ones. Yeah, the God mode, God mode, <laughs> Proto Nemesis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go to yeah. the deck base. God mode activate. Yeah, that's the only one that can do that. I call it because I can ship. <laughs> <laughs> Have we heard anything about whether any of the older limited hulls are going to be available in this uh, prize, and if they're going to like up the number that you can have, like they did that other one? I haven't heard anything myself, and I mean, I'm I'm not going to claim to, to, to be first. It's like every now and then I get slip something that I can use, but uh, playlists. As far as every time I've asked, it's still being worked on. So I'm trying not to harass anybody too much, but. Usually, I try to get uh, most of my information from the forums, and I haven't seen anything posted yet. Um, but um, right now, I'm kind of am expecting there to be maybe some uh, limited holes in there. I mean, it just makes sense to me that there would be. And uh, but I don't know if they're going to up the the limits. So if you already have like two Grimshine Berserkers, they're probably not going to let you have a third. But we'll see. I mean, I'm just that's just pure speculation on my end. I really don't know for sure. Yeah. I hope they bring the frost burn back. I'm kicking myself for not getting here's, it the first time. Here's a speculation, if you want a speculation. I was thinking maybe originally when the raid starts, it'll be just non-limited holes. Once you break those black line that somebody mentioned, maybe it'll open up limited holes or different lots of holes, and they'll be limited. Shh, you're giving them ideas. Yeah. Oh shit! Well, what Thanks. do you guys, what do you guys think about them? Them trying to like unite sectors for the benefit of the sector type thing, man. It, it, and it, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? I mean, it's I don't know if they're just like trying to force everybody to have a good, good attitude, or you know, I, I remember back in the day when they added like nav relays and all that. You had all of the uh, like the sector cops would be like, "Well, see, this is kick size way of saying they're making it easier for you to hit out a sector," and I'm like, "Whatever, man," you know. 
<laughs> and like I said, I know when yeah. I put my mouse in your base, it says attack, and and I know when I look at my locator, it's got in sector targets and it's got out of sector targets. <laughs> but now it's just weird. It's like and now I kind of feel like they're trying to unite the sectors with this new theme, and uh, I don't know. I thought it was kind of kind of funny, kind of comical. Price, remember, well, maybe we're they'll use the international. I'm sorry. I'm saying we're all forsaken. We're all on the same side. <laughs> that, that, that's not how it is. Uh, was that was that extreme or Archie? That, that was a, that was the Archie shout out right there. That was Archie right. speaking through uh, um, extreme. On yourself, on that, Archie, if you're ahead of the teams. On that um, price, I mean, I kind of think it is a little bit crazy, but at the same time, two of the things that keep me going on this is a because I play it at work, and b the social aspect, like this here, right to now, the social aspect. I think what this what they're bringing into this raid does bring the social aspect in a higher level. Yeah, I, I, I could definitely see that. I mean, I'm all for being friendly with people who are willing to be friendly, but not I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy about being friendly with people who are, like, trying to tell me that, you know, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. like that. You know, I'm like, it's within the rules. I mean, it's like, why can't I do it? It's because you said so. I, 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 it's stuff like that drives me crazy. Yeah, I was hitting Insector last night, and Bunny hey, was like, sector. hey, why are you hitting Insector? Uh, well, I'm bored, and I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, well, if I, I personally yeah, want to get out of Sector. I just need to go literally 20 seconds to the north of my base, and I'm in Sector 6. <laughs> I'm right on the border. I have an excuse, then. Yeah, I, I don't have an excuse. <laughs> See, I think it might Maybe the world chat well, you'd think be... I'd be less of a target seeing that I'm two minutes from the relay, but no. <laughs> yeah, I hate being far from the tower. I mean, granted, I'm a bigger target when I'm close to the tower, but, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I always but have a big target. Well, just, <laughs> if you're miles away, everybody seems to get their foot before you. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather be closer to the tower. That way, you know, you're closer to the, the unidentified rating fleets when they come out, the dredges exactly. when they come out. Yeah. yeah, you know. Talk about the rating fleets. They're about due, aren't they? Generally, well, uh, right? Fortnite. Yeah. After raid. yeah, yeah, they haven't come out yet. So I'm guessing they're going to be after the raids. So um, I know uh, this this week starts this Thursday starts the. Um, the event, so most likely it'll be the Thursday after that. So maybe the 23rd, we'll see Earths again. I know they like to come out on uh, start on Wednesdays and finish on Thursdays, don't they? Yeah. So that'd be like the 22nd, and then maybe. But um, then maybe they'll come out on the 22nd. I guess we'll see. Well, I hope they put those little numbers on again, because it mm. made it a lot easier to select the right fleet for the uh, for the for the uh, you know to rank yeah. up. I think that's why they took them off. Yeah. In the beginning, they never had numbers on, so they've gone back to that. Yeah, I like them a lot better with numbers on myself. It saved a lot of time. Yeah, you yep. used it in Oak, do you? I personally just don't hit them anymore. Well, that last bunch, man, they they, they uh, it seemed to me like they made them a premium again. Uh, made, well, made those yep. a premium, you know. I mean, it's already they're already take, taken uh, pretty much base hitting away from the average player, you know. I mean, if you don't have the monster fleets. I say that, but I, I'm a high level, and people don't like me hitting 50s, okay? So uh, if I want to hit, like, you know, good strong bases, you know, I have to have um, I, I have to have good strong, you know, like, high rank fleets and all that stuff, and with lots and lots of repair time, and uh, I just can't afford it, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and with these these uh, Earths, the unidentified rating fleets that came out last time, man, I mean, you just took so much damage, you couldn't hit very much. It was it really wasn't even worth putting the salty dogs on seemed to me like it was just better, more boring, but better uh, hitting uh, salvages, regular salvages. But that was, that's my two cents. Yeah. And, on, and, on, and on that, Jeff, with the salvages um, disappearing quicker now, that's an even better idea because before, the biggest problem with hitting salvages like that was they sat there. Yeah, cleaning up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, nobody wanted to go out and clean up because as soon as you go out and you start cleaning up, somebody else will start hitting all of the salvages as soon as they spawn and, you, and you're back stuck on cleanup duty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. I, had a I had a solution for that. Didn't have a lot of friends because of it. Yeah. I found the subs really easy to rank up. Yeah, subs are probably the easiest thing to rank up for sure. Well, yeah, you're just going to someone else's sector. Let them worry about it. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> oh, what did you guys think of the April Fool's joke? What was the April Fool's joke? I missed it. Oh, typhoon ships. ships. Typhoon fleets. <laughs> oh, yeah. The level, level four typhoon fleets. It, <laughs> it irritated me, to be honest with you. <laughs> that was typhoon fleets that did no damage. <laughs> Well, exactly. Well, I, I didn't get to hit any. I didn't. I, I saw one. I only saw one the whole time, and uh, and somebody else was hitting it. It's the only one I ever saw. Besides all the pictures I've seen posted all over the, the place, but I people, I guess, just managed to run into them when they because they of course they were unannounced, right? Nobody knew they were coming. There was no schedule, no. or anything like that. But um, mm -hmm. so it's like it just very few people got to take advantage of it. What did yeah, they get out of it? No the hell of it. I, I couldn't understand either one of you. VXP. Uh, toxic, what did you, I'm sorry, Toxic left. Uh, extreme, what was that? Extreme? Uh, you cut in and out of there. You went C-3PO on us, or on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I was just asking what, what it was that you said, because I know when you two were talking, I couldn't understand either one of you. Uh, I just asked, did they, act, did they give out anything to those fleets, or were they just kind of there for the hell of it? Okay, oh, yeah, and Willard said that, VXP, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that that's all you got. There was like almost no resources in them, but you could get like 500 VXP for each target, and it was like almost no damage or no damage. Nice. It was no damage. Lots Actually, of fire power, no damage. Talking uh, about no damage. Sorry. Yeah, I was just trying to understand what Willard said. Lots of talking firepower, about no, no damage. I'm sorry. <laughs> One <laughs> Willard at a time, please. <laughs> 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 I still don't know what he said, man. This is frustrating. Um, maybe you just type it Willard, and then we'll let uh, whoever else was talking talk. I'm telling you, VHF radio is the way to go. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. Right, just start from the left, work way to the right, one person at a time. Okay, Willard, he said lots of firepower, no damage. I, I, the pictures that I did see of those, I mean, it was like just billions of like torpedoes coming in from all the different targets and UAVs. And they were just and like swarming, was, yeah, completely surrounded. Cause and there were the, and there were the super torps from the freaking Krakens. Yeah, yeah, it was. A, it, that's what that looked like. They were supposed to do splash damage, but they didn't do so. Am I still breaking? Yeah, you're breaking up. Bro. All right, sorry about that. Yeah. Have you tried clearing the cache? <laughs> 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 Ooh. Was that was that Wayne that was saying something earlier? I'm not sure who it was. No. Okay. Yeah, it was me. It was oh. me. Uh, sorry yeah. about that. Um, all I was saying was uh, you just remind me of a couple of things that I probably shouldn't say on here because kicks I might hear it. You're talking about no damage. I actually found by just trying out, if you hit a drag base, if you let somebody join a really low level or anybody for that matter and they just run off in the corner just before it dies, it gets to that deadline, they run off in the corner, they'll actually get a couple of hundred uranium for yeah, being there yeah. before they kill. A second thing I was going to say is for anybody who's got newbies in their section, like really, really newbies, if they do the downpour t campaign, just the first part and re abort it and restart it, abort it, restart it, they can actually do it no damage and get res, 2.8 million res max. Yeah, well, a lot of those campaign systems for anybody uh, that needs a lot of resources in a really short, quick period of time. I mean, like the campaigns are definitely the way to go. Even if you just go in there and do just like the first uh, first wave, you know, and then uh, and then abort the campaign and then start it up again. I mean, uh, a lot of them will pay about five, give you five hundred percent. I'm echoing on somebody, but a lot of them will give you five hundred percent each time you go in. You know what I mean? Uh, resources, so. I mean, it's definitely a really good way. I know I had started an Armor Games account a long time ago. I haven't touched it in months, but, um, you know, that was – I used the campaigns. That was the easiest way I could get myself resources. I completely forgot about Armor Games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I have game. an Armor Games account. Uh -huh. That's All right. Um... All right. Uh, well, I guess. Hey, Joel. Welcome to the show. Uh, d did you have any topics you wanted to discuss today? Or you want to say anything about descent or anything else? Not really, because it was basically covered already. 
Okay. Well, I didn't see a whole lot of questions or anything over in the chat either, but I guess if nobody else has any topics, then we're just going to have a quick show today because um, I don't want to be pulling teeth in here. Um, well, I've, I've got some if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. It was, um, it was just a thought that I had um, because I was saying earlier about people saying they're not going to do the raid, and the other option, if you're not doing the raid, is to do the campaigns and win the, uh, the other holes. Is it more of a false economy to do that, given that already you're looking at Stingrays going to R10 and beating Zoe Stingrays, Stingrays sorry. do you think further down the line the nuclear cruiser is going to go R10 to outdo the Greta, the Mastodon is going to go R10 to outdo the Proto ne uh, Pro Nemesis, Proto Mastodon, and so on? You know, the back looks worse than the front. Uh, um Okay, you were asking, does it make sense to go for the limited campaigns, uh, the limited holes in the campaigns? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, given that um, probably further down the line, R10 is just going to make them, you know, absolutely useless. Well, yeah, that. thank you. That 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 possibility is definitely there because uh, you don't know what Kixai is going to do. I mean, I know the the R10 Stingray was a complete and total surprise to me personally, and. Um, but at the same time, I was happy is because I had built, I had built a full fleet of stingrays, and then they came out with the Zoe stingray like immediately after I finished, and that really just irritated me. And uh, I don't know if anybody remembers, but I was also our retrofitting uh, uh, interdictors, you know, and then they came out with the uh, uh, the the Fasago interdictor or whatever, and um, uh, they put that in the campaign, and so I I just I got so mad about that I never built any. But, um, yeah, I mean, the possibility is def definitely there, but, I mean, you just kind of, you, you can't, it's hard to build for the future in, in this game because you never know what's coming. You can only build for now, you know. Yeah. They may never get to R10. Um, they, they may never get to the, the well, they, I'm sure they're probably going to get to R10 Mastodon at some point, but whether it's going to have, like, the random launch override that the Proto has, the, the Proto Mastodon is always going to have that, pro, like, the over you know, random launch override, and yeah. I doubt they're ever going to add a random launch override to <clears> the uh, retrofitted standard hull. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll ever do that, but you'll probably, th um, you'll probably find that if they do go to R10, there'll be another bonus that just, it it, it, it makes it more in favour of the standard hull, like a higher reload rate or resistance buff, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the nuclear cruiser in the next retrofit pack. Because, yeah, the Greta still has the random launch override. I personally think it's going to be another Nighthawk-type retrofit thing. Utterly useless. The other ships Probably. are very eager to see, though. The other ones, I'm very eager to see what they do with them. Like Dreadnought? Yeah. Well, because the uh, R5 Dreadnought was pretty much retrofitted to be a ballistic hull, <laughs> considering everything they've released of recent... I'm again. I'd very much like to see what they're going to do with it. Yeah, they could take it in a completely different direction, right? I mean, if they wanted to, they could. They could end up adding some missile stuff to it. But yeah. um, I was just looking at the YouTube chat over here, I, I, and I know. I, I guess I saw uh, uh, L L Hefe um, talking about splash on a missile. I'm assuming he's talking about the proto proto nemesis, and uh, with, with that being a pretty unique at attribute uh, for the proto nemesis. And um, let me see here. Um, and I guess uh, David Wolf, I think he was asking about like different limited holes that uh, are must-haves. So maybe maybe that's what they're looking for us to talk about, like must-have holes. And the Frosty is definitely one. Phantom Nighthawk, if you can get it, is I, in my opinion, is definitely one. It's it it is a pretty big equalizer, and it'll let you continue to play even when your dock's dead. You know. Harlock Atlas carrier. Yeah, you think the Harlock Atlas carrier? I mean, the random launch override's really nice, but. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of people using those these days. Maybe the people are just yeah. having too much fun with other things, huh? Well, I've actually got a Harlock with the new Locust um, UAV in my base, and it does wonders. You love it, huh? It, yeah. It'll take out one, one and a half holes before it even kills it. it, it it'll only get two, one, one or two volleys off of the new Locust, but... Um, by the time that the locust actually stops spawning around it, or um, swarming around it, I should say, um, it actually kills one of the hulls and half of another one. Nice. So it, they're really good in a base defence. But as you, I think you were saying earlier, Price, about 
base defense now, you, you, you've got to go make a mix. You can't just, um, like, you've got to have, say, an enforcer with launches on it for the Wendigo. I've got a Harlock, and I'm actually um, going to ref I'm refitting um, a Goliath at the moment as well. So I'm trying to mix it up. And... Oh. Base defense has always been that way. Now I, I I don't have a really strong base right now. Uh, you know I, I just I just can't afford to keep up personally. Uh, you know with because you, your your base defense you pretty much almost have to update it like monthly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah jack of all trades is has always been the way to go. You never want to have a, you know a specialist guard. Never. Mm. Yeah. Um, if I had hard looks, go ahead. If I had hard if I had Harlots Atlas, I would use that for, like, I have Storm Campaign, uh, Fractured Empires. I, That's what I'd use it for. So you just use it for other campaigns? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, cool. I guess... Uh, Trying to think, is there any other? I, I know, I, I know the Grimshine Wrath and Berserker has been really big too. So those have been really nice, uh, r really nice hulls to get. So I don't know. I, I guess you just when you're when you're looking for hulls, just you definitely want to look for something that uh, you know is going to benefit you and uh, help you get a lot of your other stuff done. You know, a, a lot of your get a lot of your chores done a lot easier and cheaper than maybe you can afford to have more fun in other areas of the game. Yeah. Uh, something that complements the tech you already have. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Just because everyone else is using it doesn't mean you'll be able to ut utilize it. It's probably the biggest thing I say in my videos. If you're looking for a price in the raid, look at what you have, look what's going to complement that, then make a decision. Mm -hmm. Build fleets that are go towards your play strengths. You know, like if you're not a good driver, don't build Mastodon fleets. <laughs> you know, build fleets that go towards your strengths and your playability. If you prefer a fleet for sleep, don't get something that moves at the speed of the smell. <laughs> Goliath. <laughs> yeah. Go get something fast, maneuverable. And toilet races. <clears throat> and something I tell my alliance: don't don't go and buy any prizes until at least the last day of the raid. So you know what you've got and what you can buy and what you can't buy. I gotta tell you, it does kill me when people are done like the second day of a six-day raid, and they're like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, I got what I wanted already." And I'm like, "You got like four more days. I mean, you got some other. This is nothing else that you'd want, you know, really." And uh, yeah, and it, it seems like that always happens too, where people are always done like 24 hours or 48 hours into it, and uh, and and yeah. they say they're done already, and I'm like, "Wow." That's just you know not it's not a whole lot of uh, ambition there you know and uh, it, it just definitely just doing everything you can until the last day and then cashing in is great advice I think and it's I, I it kills me when people don't do that I uh, I like it when people finish the raid out early because they're the ones who sit there and coin everything and builds and do all the research for me and save me and my wallet the pain <laughs> well I'm not talking about the coiners I'm talking about the non coiners that do that oh. The the ones that just they're just not ambitious at all, oh. you know. They they, they basically yeah. try to pick up like a little like a level two speed system or something like that. Speed system two because they missed it, you know, last time it came out, and then they're like, oh, I got it, I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, that's another thing I like to say, hey, if it's in the Forsaken mission, and there's another prize in there that's not in the Forsaken mission, grab the prize that's not, because chances are, if it's already in the mission, it'll come back around eventually. Well, I, I have actually asked, and I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I mean, uh, I don't generally get my way or anything like that. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. I'll just say that. But I have asked uh, or suggested on the Thursday show that, you know, because a lot of people are like two weeks behind on the Forsaken missions now, uh, because they, uh, you know, they, 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 a couple months back, they wouldn't move the uh, content drop up a couple weeks in the month. So yeah. instead of being like on the fourth week of the month, they moved it up to like the second week of the month. And uh, mm -hmm. so that basically has caused a lot of people to fall behind and actually end up missing blueprints because they got rolled, turned around and cycled back out uh, before they were acquired. And uh, so I've actually I've requested that some some Forsaken missions be added, you know, so maybe some people can get a couple get a couple of those items and uh, that way they can get caught up. 
Yeah. Fair they point. Seem, they seemed quite on board with that idea when you said that, Jeff. They did. Yeah. Especially, especially if they put it as yeah, the items in there, what are considered essentials like D5E, etc. I mean, I don't have D5E. I don't have a lot of what's considered essential. So, admittedly, I did manage to get the reflective coating free, not this forsaken, last forsaken, so... And that's almost at our five already. Yeah. It'd be nice if we could pick what we wanted from the forsaken mission. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Yeah, yeah it's not, probably not going to happen, though. No. That would never yeah. happen. That would affect no. the uh, Kixai economy, so... Yes. I don't know how. Because even if you have all the prizes, people still do it anyways for the uranium. Yeah, um, there's so. there, there are a lot of people. I mean, I've actually have taken weeks off. Uh, well, this is before they added uranium, but um, I had taken weeks off of the Forsaken mission because I had everything. I've done that. Yeah. And I know this is probably not the best way to sit there and argue this, but if the people are able to choose what they want, they're also more likely to sit there and coin something, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of people probably got hulls built waiting around for a particular special. They're still waiting to win on the Forsaken mission. And those are the guys are probably going to be the most upset, too, and they get cycled out before they ever win them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, if you get what you want, you're more, than, you're more likely to sit there and coin it right away to put it on the ship. Yeah. Sorry, killed it. Well, there's one guy in my alliance that he, he built um certain hull. I won't say which one, but he was waiting for the bulkheads, and then they... Took it out, <laughs> and he was he was not happy at all. And like um, it come in last week again, and he actually got it first time up, and he he, he was just about jumping with joy. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet he did a happy dance. Yeah, yeah, I bet he did happy dance. Yeah, and I don't blame him. Yeah. Well, I just saw the Crusaders. I mean, is the uh, the nuclear accelerator that's still in the Forsaken mission in it? Yeah, yep. yeah, it's yeah. still in. If they go with this idea and put it in the this section, I will grab it because I need it. And well, I know a lot of people built Crusaders going and were waiting on that. Yeah, yeah I was it, lucky enough to get that first time it was introduced. Was yeah, really same. Yeah, I built my Crusaders and I, I was waiting for it, but I actually put um, was it uh, Hard and Barrels three on? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're on mine at the moment, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> You'll be a lot happier when you get the um, accelerator. Accelerator. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I don't know. Um, I guess uh, is there any kind of tips? I guess I know Grimshine Harlock Fleet's been a really popular fleet in the past in these particular types of events for the, the campaigns and stuff like that. Um, is uh, I'm I'm assuming uh, other combinations. I mean, for people that have it, will be Frostburn uh, Crusader fleets. Uh, Lord knows they make short work of enough bases these days, and um, um, I imagine those will probably do really good during the event too. Um, you know. It's probably Mastodons as well, Price. Uh, so you yeah. long range. Yeah. I, I, used, I used that in the last raid, my Jug X Mastodon fleet, and I got what I wanted. I got the top prizes, so mm -hmm. they, they were pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, Balls Ivory Gale will probably be your best friend in this raid as well. Really? Yeah. If we can get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. And I was uh, watching my friend. He was hitting the base last night with the Crusaders and Arbos and Bulls Ivory Gate, and it was just, I thought it was devastating before, but that was just stupid. <laughs> I, uh, mm, I know from you know the the last Forsaken Arena tournament. I'm still like loaded up with uh, Rogue Crews. I, I I can't roll for anything right now because I have I got like probably six or eighty eight cutthroats now because I did the Let It Burn campaign. So I think I'm up to about six of those now, and I just can't bring myself to throw any of them away. Even though um, I have uh, I got I got lots of uranium. I'm probably about 180 thousand, maybe 100 and, uh, about 185 thousand uranium right now, and I won't coin. I know a lot of people will coin to to spend as much of the uranium as they possible, possible, and I, I won't do that. I just can't bring myself to. I have enough anxiety coining fleets, you know, Jeff. when I put coin on a on a boat. But um, golly, I know a lot Jeff. of people do that. Sorry, Jeff. You yeah. ever thought about using them uh, cutthroats for doing this raid? Because you get a uh, thirty percent uh, 
radiation, don't you? Oh, that's true. You do. Yeah, you do. So you, you get radioactive you, defense, yeah. Yeah, so use them for this raid if you want to get rid of some. Yeah, and you know, um, th these camp those campaign targets, the platforms, uh, that's not a yep. bonus. That's actually, I mean, if I don't know what the uranium payout's going to be like, but, I mean, you could potentially get double uranium out of those, too. So I guess we'll see. Also, if you yeah. haven't used it yet, you know, your grease monkeys. Yeah, I got two of those now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got two of those. Got one from the uh, from the Going Rogue campaign, and then I actually got one when I was trying to roll for Bullseye Brigades during the last Forsaken Arena tournament. So, yeah, I got one from the Rogue campaign. I'm saving it because it, aside from when some people thought they're being funny, it did wonders for me last time. I it was it. awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've got are... one, which I got from the arena <laughs> of all places. <laughs> Uh, Joel, the uh, dredges are going to be on Friday uh, during the event. We we actually did confirm that on the show, so right. we we're not going to miss any dredge days. He, for the audience, YouTube audience, he had actually put that in our hangout chat. So he was just trying to get confirmation that we were going to have a dredge day. We are. But uh, anyway, um, I guess um, just go ahead and make one more pass. Any anybody got anything else? I mean, we are about five minutes to the hour, so uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> so oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember it got mentioned a couple of weeks ago, or maybe more than that, actually, because it's been a while since I watched. But um, it do there doesn't seem to be any mention in this raid coming up of these build tokens that we're going to get offered. I don't yeah. think that's you yet. Uh, I was really hoping they would have been out this week, but they didn't come out this week, so I'm not expecting those until after the event as well. Oh, okay. I thought it was part of the raid. Yeah, no, I think they said they're going to come out as part of a limited campaign trial run thing. They, yeah. they did. Uh, about the 21st, right? Yeah, yeah it's about after the raid around the 21st and they plan releasing pretty much everything at once. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> everything. <laughs> Extreme said it, everybody. Just so y'all know who that was, that was Extreme who said that. Yep. <laughs> You'll be banned next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they tried that one time. They ended up owing me coin and an apology. I don't, they haven't tried to ban me since. Oh, no man hammer for extreme. Yeah. yeah. No, they actually they, that that was mm. true story. Yeah, actually, I was banned for two weeks at one point. That was years ago, though. You must be old. <laughs> Game wise, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actual yeah. age wise. Age wise, eh, debatable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> About 12, eh? 12 and a half, thank you very much. <laughs> now he'll be banned because he's not old enough to be on it. But anyway, um, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up then, guys. Uh, yeah. we're, we're close enough to the hour. Um, all, you, all, you, all, you, all you need for this raid? There we go. That's, <laughs> <easy>. <laughs> That's the trial size. That's the size. <laughs> I've got a little bit of coin, though, so I can get away with the travel size. Well, I thought you'd have a big jug of it. Trust us. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, well. I reckon you need, need it. it. <laughs> well, if that doesn't work, there you go. We've got, we got some more. There we go. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of fun. It's Malavera for that burn. Get your credit card out. We didn't right. really need to say that one. <laughs> this is All a better right. one. <laughs> All right. No, that one comes with regrets. <laughs> not careful. <laughs> well, guys, I, I trust do us. Think, we're professionals. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to th do want to thank everybody for kept coming on here. Everybody for joining us on YouTube and the YouTube chat, and um, thanks everybody for hopping here on the panel. And um, I guess uh, I will be. I do plan on streaming live. Uh, as, for, as soon as possible on Thursday when the event starts. I'm kind of hoping, uh, I'm planning right now to be in Alpha and then start streaming on my Twitch, uh, which is twitch.tv slash price underscore is underscore wrong. Uh, that's my Twitch URL. And um, and that should, you know, if, if you're not in Alpha and you, you want to see what the uh, event looks like, um, you know, you'll be able to see it an hour early or same time everybody else does anyway. So you'll be able to see it you know, right away then. I, I generally will try to check out all the targets and uh, and such. So uh, look for that. I'll, I'll actually be posting on the BV page. And our, our BV page 
is on Facebook, and the address for that is bp.battlevortex.tv. So for those of you uh, watching, if you're not a member, uh, go over there, click join. Um, also, if you uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page here. Um, and you can see the videos here also. But if you subscribe to my YouTube, you know, give us likes and all that stuff on our videos. We definitely appreciate that. So um, anyway, um, I guess uh, just keep an eye out, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay. There you go. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.